emergency alert. This is not a test. Immediate threat for residents of <laughs> counties. Be wary of severe winds, lightning, severe rain, flash floods. Residents are advised to stay indoors. Please lock or bar all entryways into your house. From using any devices that emit light or loud noise. Please enter a room with no windows. Effective indefinitely. Issued by the National Weather Service. This was the message that I was greeted by in the middle of an episode of The Big Bang Theory in my living room. I'm frozen halfway through a, a fork full of Kraft mac and cheese, I sat bolt upright and turned around to look out the window. The sky, as I thought, was crystal clear. A few clouds, but nothing crazy. No rain, no thunder, nothing. Confused, I turned off the TV, erasing the alert from the screen. My two dogs came walking over to me and I petted them on their heads. One of my dogs though, the other's brother, it was shaking profusely from the buzzing noise that always shows up with the amber alerts and the like. I left them in the living room and walked through my kitchen and onto my front porch. My neighbours too were standing outside of their houses, all looking at the sky in amusement. An immediate threat? It didn't seem like it, I thought as my phone started buzzing with the same tone. One by one, everyone else's phone started ringing. I should explain, I guess, that I've never experienced a severe weather warning for real. Not once in my life, in fact. I suppose that it should come as no surprise, seeing as I live in Oregon of all places. I supposed that maybe it was just a mistake. But just as the thought floated across my mind, I heard the siren. The siren of the squad car coming down the street. An officer talked through the speaker. This is not a drill. Please enter your homes immediately. Do not go outside under any circumstances. Never the kind of guy to ignore higher authorities. I entered my house nervously, turned off all the lights on the above ground floors and took my dogs into my basement with a sleeping bag, some food, my phone, my charger, some spare batteries, a, a flashlight and other essentials. I called my brother who lives a couple of blocks away and asked him if he had gotten the message. He had and... I considered saying that we should stay together to wait out the storm, but then I figured that we'd probably get into trouble for that, so I just hung up and got comfortable on my sleeping bag and started browsing Reddit. Eventually, I fell asleep, seeing as I was under stress and had woken up pretty early. When I woke up, I realized that I still didn't hear any rain though. I mean, seriously, nothing at all. More confused than ever, I decided to see if the alert had been called off. I turned on my phone and called my brother again. It went straight to voicemail though, so I gave up. I decided to risk it and just go upstairs. I had to squeeze between the door and the wall to keep my dogs from following me upstairs, but I won and they stayed in the basement. I walked through my kitchen to the front door and looked out the window part of it. As I squinted to see outside in the dark... Strange, seeing as it was only 2pm judging by my clock, the TV flickered briefly. I looked around at it and it flickered again, but this time every device on the ground floor flickered. Thinking little of it, I turned around and looked through the door again. Every house on the block had its lights turned off and nobody was outside, except for one teenage girl. Uh, a thin short-haired girl wearing what looked like a, a pillowcase walked unsteadily down the street, very slowly, looking as though she was having uh, some difficulty. I turned around, now extremely confused and worried, and got the dog's food bowls, which I had forgotten earlier. When I looked up, at one of the houses, uh, the one diagonally across from mine, right next to the house across the street and to the left, had its lights on and one of its windows broken. I don't know why, but I shuddered at this and just rushed back into the basement as the lights flickered intensely. I locked the door to the basement and sat on an old tattered couch that I had brought down here. The basement is where I put everything that I didn't have room for. 
So, yeah, it's, uh, it's totally packed. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention something that may be worth noting, too. I live in a small town. A very small town. Probably with a population of under 500, in fact. Maybe even less. As a matter of fact, it isn't even on most maps. We, uh, we never make any news. We never have any scandals or anything. This is the first interesting thing that's happened since, uh, I think Mrs. White lost her dentures to a raccoon. So, I guess it's possible that this whole thing just seems way worse than what it actually is. Call me crazy, but until a few minutes ago, I was thoroughly enjoying myself. I love these scenarios, and my basement is totally secure, so I'm having the time of my life, in fact. Well, at least, uh, I was. I decided to turn on my radio. What harm could it do as long as I didn't turn the volume up too high, right? I was surprised to find that our local radio station was still up and running too. They were talking about the weather, so I listened hard for any news that I hadn't heard. And there wasn't any. They were just as confused as us. Not wanting to listen to crappy pop music indefinitely, I tuned into another station. This one was one that I hadn't heard before. Could you give me the status of the West County? Over. No new developments. Over. Uh, okay, uh, any fatalities? Over. What part of no new developments do you not understand, McClellan? A squad car will be passing through soon to scan the area for the target, okay? Over. Any ETA on that? Over. No, not yet. Over. Uh, any word from HQ on Jones? Over. No, McClellan. Not yet. Not since number 13 first got out. Over. Well, let me know if and uh, when they contact me. Over. At that point, I lost the signal. Well, not really, but the connection got so weak that I could barely make out anything that they were saying anymore. I figured that I must have found a police communication channel or something, and I'd been left with no answers whatsoever at this point. That was about 45 minutes ago, as of me sharing this with you guys. I don't know what's going on. Do any of you guys live near me? I'd say what county I live in and which ones were affected, but I don't know. Privacy reasons, right? Anyway, I'll keep you guys updated, okay? Until then, uh, wish me luck. Hey, uh, guys, just a quick update before the major update. About five minutes ago, a car alarm went off somewhere to the right of my house. Uh, I'm too freaked out to go and check it out, but uh, I'll go up and see how it looks tomorrow morning, and uh, I'll update you then, okay? Uh, hey, guys, and uh, sorry for the wait, uh, I know a lot of you have been waiting to hear from me about my current situation. So, uh, I have some new insight into what may be going on. Uh, I still have access to the police radio channel, but I haven't had a good signal from it since my first attempt, and I haven't tried looking at it very much. But about an hour ago, however, I did get into it, and I wrote down everything as I heard it. Officer Jones, you there? Over. I am. Uh, who's this? Over. It's Officer Sloan, sir. Do you have any intel from HQ? Over. Uh, I'm afraid not. I just got done talking to McClellan and that son of a bitch Kowalski. Any word over on your end? Over. Not since the last broadcast, about 45 minutes ago. The last thing I heard was about the footage of the wreck. Over. Yeah, I suspected as much. How are you holding up, Sloan? Over. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, all things considered, I guess. And you, Jones? Over. Yeah, well enough. Uh, I, I tell you, though, if 13 doesn't turn up fast, I might just end up like poor old Officer Brown, with my brain scattered on the ceiling. Over. Yeah, rest his soul. Over. At this point, Jones and Sloan went silent for a good ten seconds at least. Well, uh... I guess I'd better get in touch with Kowalski. Uh, I put him in charge of examining the wreck footage. Wish me luck. Over. Yes, sir. Over. 
Sloan disconnects and Jones waits a minute to call Kawaski. Kawaski, this is Jones. Over. Jones, hey, uh, I'm just starting on that wreck footage. I haven't noticed anything out of the ordinary yet, but uh, I guess time will tell. Over. Right. Uh, look, uh, Kawaski, I need you to focus, okay? This is one of the weirdest parts of the whole ordeal. I mean, think about it. A cop crashes into a telephone pole in a, a deserted road in broad daylight. Over. With all due respect, it might have been an honest mistake. I mean, come on, it's, it's pretty dark out. What with the disturbances that we have trying to prevent 13 from releasing? Over. Look, we all know 13 is an anomaly. Now, that's nothing new, but I'm telling you. Either he found her and she got the upper hand, or... Let's just say that I'm not ruling out suicide, okay? Over. Whatever. Hey, uh, let me get back to doing what I've got to do here, okay? I'll talk to you later. Over. So, something else worth noting is that the emergency broadcast that I received has now been updated to say that uh, emergency services have been suspended indefinitely and leaving one's house is punishable by law. Also, I took a look at the format of the broadcast and the interface of it and it isn't one that I've recognized before, but in my confused state, I'd been unable to tell. Weird, but what hasn't been lately, right? I've been doing alright as of late, but I'm still paranoid at every sound I hear. As I started writing this, the, the wind picked up and I can hear rain hitting the roof too, getting harder by the minute. It looks like that weather warning wasn't entirely bullshit, huh? So, uh, I took my dogs up to the shower to do their business, as some of you guys have suggested. I haven't gone upstairs yet, but I have nothing else to report, and I don't want to give you guys half-assed updates, so I'm going to go and take a gander out the window and document what I see as I see it. So, uh, I just went upstairs, and I think I'll be taking that box of Samoas down with me when I go back down. Hell, I'll take them and the Thin Mints. But desperate times call for desperate measures, right? <laughs> uh, as maybe you can tell, uh, humor is now how I deal with stress. Unhealthy, I know, but uh, whatever. It is what it is. I just went down to the window, and I don't see anything too, but the neighbor's window is still very broken. The street is really dark, and all the lights are definitely off. Now it's raining, though the streets are overflowing with water, almost anyway, and there, the first flash of lightning too. The thunder came immediately and the storm's right over us, right over our little town. The girl doesn't seem to be outside anymore, but I'll be keeping my eyes open. Weird. After that first lightning strike, uh, the sky's lighting up every few seconds. Like I said, uh, nobody around here, including me, is uh, very informed on severe weather, seeing as it never comes our way, but I'm pretty sure that this isn't common. Okay, uh, the neighbor's door just opened, the one with the broken window, but nobody's there though. Must have been the wind. I hope he noticed, uh, come to think of it, maybe I should give him a call and see how he's going. We used to talk sometimes after all, and it would be nice to hear from someone going through the same shit as me. Wait, I can, I can see him. He's lying on the floor. Oh shit, and the girl just came through the door. I, uh, I'm ducked under the window here and I don't think she saw me. Uh, I'm going to pick out the window just to check though. No? Okay, she's, uh... She's walking down the street now. She just passed my house. I don't know why she'd willingly go outside in the weather like this. I mean, in a scenario like this, but... Whatever, I guess. Uh, I'm going back into the basement, though. Uh, I called my brother earlier, and he hasn't gone upstairs in a while, too. A good thing, I guess, but... He said that he heard a crash from one of his neighbor's houses a little while earlier, but nothing too loud. Nothing loud enough to cause serious concern, anyway. Weird. 
as I'm writing this, my dogs look worried. <laughs> without them, I'd have lost my mind by now, I must admit. But without you guys too, it's nice having people to talk to in a time like this. Uh, maybe they just have to go do their business again. It's risky though, uh, seeing as my bathroom is upstairs. I'm going to take them upstairs, but uh, I'll take my phone with me. So, we just entered the bathroom and there's nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, they're done now and we're going back downstairs and I'm going to duck past the window though. I come to think of it, I should really invest in some blinds for that window. Oh, fuck. I just went into the basement but uh, as I passed the window, I saw her pass it too on the other side. I don't think she saw me but holy fuck. Why is she wandering out there like this? By now, it's crossed my mind multiple times that she must be 13. And from this close, that pillowcase, it, uh, it looks a, a lot like a hospital gown. Shit, guys. I'd phone the cops, but I don't even know their number. I need to go. Uh, I'll update you guys soon, okay? Until then, I guess assume I'm alive. Uh, hey guys, uh, so by now uh, I figured out that 911 does take you to the police, but I also remembered that bit about the emergency services being suspended, so there's that. Hey everyone, it's been raining a lot lately, rain and thunder and the wind is really howling something terrible too. But as of yet, I'm okay. I haven't heard anything from the cops who, according to some comments below, uh, they told me that they don't use radio channels to communicate anymore. So, uh, that radio channel, it may be something else. Like uh, an independent organization. Like storm chasers or something, but chasing escape mental patients instead of storms. Anyway... Me and the dogs are doing fine at this point. Nothing has really transpired since my last update. I know, I know, I, I really should stop going upstairs, but today I, I have to. I'll be real sneaky though, okay? But I need to. I only have enough food for today. I mean, I, I guess I could stretch it out to tomorrow if I really rationed it, but honestly, I'd prefer to just get it over with now. Huh. The lights just flickered. I mean, sure, they've been doing that a lot lately, but that time it's, it lasted a while. Anyway, I checked the alert on my phone again, but nothing about it was different. I recently ran upstairs to get some towels and plastic bags to deal with the dog's defecations, but I didn't see the girl, whom I'm assuming is 13, and whom I'm just going to refer to as 13 for now. My neighbor's door was closed again, but that's the only thing that's changed. As I'm sharing this, uh, I can hear a, a siren, I think. Not one I've heard before, though. Uh, closer to a, a police siren than anything else, but still a little bit different. I considered going to check it out, but you guys would kill me, right? Man, I really hope this all ends soon. I only have, like, a bread, a ramen that I have no way of cooking safely, uh, potato chips, a saltines, a water, and uh, a fucking salad dressing out of the arse. So, if this goes on for more than two or three more days, I think I'm going to have to eat Pete or Maybell. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'd sooner eat my own calf. <laughs> By the way, uh, I did Google my area. There was nothing in the news about it whatsoever, which was weird, seeing as our town wasn't entirely off the map. I called a few of my neighbours last night too, none of them picked up, two went straight to voicemail in fact. I chatted with my brother and things are no better by him either. I can't put this off any longer though, I'm going to have to go upstairs to get some food. I'll take my phone with me though. So, I just put some food in a bag. I crawled past the window, of course, and when I went up there, the rain started coming down even harder. I could hear some of my neighbors, doors opening and closing, 
Some shutters shook in the distance too. The shutters of the windows in my living room are open too. I guess Thirteen could see in if she wanted to, but, but no way in hell am I fixing that shit right now. So, I'm back downstairs now and I'm going to try and contact the cops again. So, uh, so far I'm, I'm not getting any signal. Okay. Uh, no luck there. Uh, hold on. Uh, I think I'm getting something actually, but it's really faint. Going to go. Check third street. Well, that was my street. Okay, uh, just make sure to be careful and ready at all times, okay? Sure, uh, but let me know how it goes when you get there too, okay? Over. And that was all illegible phrases that I could get before I lost the signal, but now I know that someone's coming down the street. Also, you guys have told me that cops don't actually say over at the end of each sentence group. I have two theories, uh, one being that they just don't know that, and the other being that they're trying to make themselves seem like cops so that if someone unauthorized finds the channel, whoops, that's me I guess, then they'll think that they're just listening to the police. I don't know if these people are trustworthy or if I should be concerned about someone coming down my street, but so far they haven't entered my house, so even if they're paranormal Nazi spy demons or something, I guess I should be good. I don't honestly think that 13 has any malicious motives too. She doesn't seem to be the kind of uh, a test subject that lives in a five-star room, so she may very well be fleeing for her own safety, but I do know that she is undeniably irrefutably dangerous, but that's for sure. Another thing, a lot of people seem to be picturing this girl as Elle from Stranger Things or something, but when I said that she was a teenager, I didn't mean 13 ish years old. I meant anywhere from 16 to 20 something. And by short hair, I didn't mean that she had a buzz cut, just a short and a, a choppy sort of fringe. Like an emo fringe, just unevenly cut though. So far, it doesn't seem like anything is going to happen today, but I still have some space to fill, so I'll just tell you how I've been lately or something. Wait a second, the radio just turned on. What? Guys, uh, the radio just talked to me. It said, open the door. Guys, I don't know, this, this is getting weird as hell. Uh, it just turned on by itself. I don't know if that was the cops or 13 or someone else, but that was weird, man. Were they talking to me specifically? My dogs are staring at it now, and uh, it just said it again, too. And it sounds so fucking calm. What the hell? My dogs just won't stop barking now too. Okay, so guys, this is this is like five minutes later now and I just got my dogs to stop barking finally, but they're still growling. That was definitely loud enough for people to hear, maybe even through the rain and everything too. I'm a bit more calm and collected now, but I'm holding a big ass kitchen knife just in case. This crazy ass psychic girl... She's going to come in here and I'm going to fucking die in this fucking basement. Okay, so uh, it's two laters now, guys, and she hasn't come in, so I think uh, I may be okay. I almost broke the radio to stop her from using it, but I didn't. Uh, I might need to stay posted on what the cops are doing, right? But uh, now my power's out and... I can only use my lantern and flashlights to light up the room now. I have to use my phone with data and I'm not going back upstairs. Not a fucking chance after that. My phone probably won't last very long on just my power banks now. And uh, Guys, uh, this might be it. I might be actually fucked this time. If, if, if I die tonight, well, my friends know my username. Well, some of them at least. Uh, Guys, uh, promise me that if you're one of the people who knows who I am, please tell my family that I love them and that I tried. I'll try to update you guys soon, but until then, uh, I guess assume I'm alive too. Hey again guys, uh, I'm back now and I want to say that so far, I'm okay. Uh, I have a lantern lit and I have enough food to last until tomorrow afternoon, uh, maybe tomorrow night even. 
The dogs are doing good too, better than me in fact, and we're currently just kind of laying low. I don't even want to risk going upstairs to get more food. Also, I don't really know what my thoughts are on the radio incident. I mean, if 13 wanted to get in, surely she just could have done that by now. Unless she's like one of those uh, old-fashioned vampires or something who can't enter without permission. And I think my neighbor would disagree with that notion. Oh, uh, speaking of the radio, I did manage to tune in on the people I've been listening to. I got a better signal than last time, but I still don't have much more information to go by. Anyway, um, here's what I heard. Hello, Officer McClellan. It's Officer Bailey here. Uh, present, over. Ain't hey, McClellan, uh, this is Sloan. Over. Sloan? <laughs> Are you ever a sound for sorries? Over. Nice to hear from you too. Over. How's everything going over on your end? Over. Well, uh, considerably better than things have been as of late. Do you think what Jones and the boss said is true? Over. What, about 13? I mean, uh, I want to, so I guess. Over. Everyone wants to believe, but do you actually believe? Over. Well, I mean, uh, if Kowalski thinks he has a lead, then fuck Kowalski. He's smart, okay? Uh, I'll give him that. Over. Look, I don't agree with everything Kowalski says or does. He has good ideas and bad ones. Sure, I guess he's got some obscure views on what should be done about 13, but it's not like he's the first one. Personally, I'm right in the middle, and I mean, I'm not here out of choice, and we're messing with human life here. Maybe Kowalski is right, just a bit. Over. Sloan, it's not his opinion on 13, it's, uh, it's just, uh, he's always just sort of rubbed me the wrong way. Look, uh, given the chance, I'd probably quit this shitty job and do something else. I don't really care what happens to 13, but Kowalski? Come on. Does he need to be here? Does he? He could be totally unemployed. I mean, he's got money. So why is he sticking around? Over. Sean, just stop. Sorry. McClellan, you're making some dangerous accusations here, okay? I can't help but get the feeling that this has something to do with two. Yes, Sloan, I'm telling you. Kalraski wigged the two experiment. McClellan, get it together, sir. Kalraski is perfectly fine, man. I don't know why you have it out for him. I can tell you that because we're friends, right? And besides, I didn't call to talk about Kowalski. I called to ask if you're going to investigate the radio disturbance on 3rd Street. Over. Well, yeah, but, uh, I don't see the point. The 13 is causing disturbances all over. But none of them particularly close to where she is, too. Over. Yeah, but maybe someone's been listening into us. I mean, usually 13 sends out larger disturbances than that. You never know, and that's the last thing we need. Over. Okay, I get it. Over and out. Now, I'm a bit concerned because they mentioned a radio disturbance on my street, which could very well have been caused by either me or a neighbor listening to them. Also, if there's one thing I learned from that conversation, it's that 13 isn't the only one in existence, seeing as they mentioned two. But calling 13 an anomaly like in the previous update or the one before that whichever it was, it makes me think that she has something the others are missing. I've also noticed that the weather has calmed down somewhat. I haven't heard anything about light rain coming from up above. And judging from that, as well as the conversation between Sloan and McClellan, I think uh, this might be called off soon. I hope at least. I think 13 is going to get found today. I really do. I'm really tired, even though it's early, because I barely slept last night, so I'm going to take a small nap. I'll wait to post this when I get up. So, I just woke up about two hours, or maybe three hours later, and the alert on my phone is now all weird. Like, it's lettered randomly, uh, capitalized every now and then, like some cliche ransom letter or something. I'm just assuming it's a glitch, but... 
still, it's, it's a bit weird. It's a little later now, and I'm officially out of food except for three granola bars now and uh, a single sleeve of saltines. Oh, and uh, one bottle of water too. This basement, it smells like dog waste and B.O. and, man, I want out. Oh, and uh, guys, the alert changed again. Now it's uh, totally empty except for the headline, emergency alert, and a URL. I really have a bad feeling about it, seeing as it's probably a virus, but uh, practically squatting in a basement with just dogs to talk to, a phone that can only fully charge once more given the status of my power banks, and storing waste in Ziploc bags. I decided to just say fuck it, and I clicked the link. It took me to a really weird site. It's just a... A black screen, uh, totally black except for the Google bar thingy and some white text. But to me, it looks a bit like a transcript, maybe? This is what it says. The O13 experiment? Notes. The subject is very uncooperative. The subjects refuse to eat. Subject seems to display unique traits, possibly anomaly. Day 1. Whitefield. Good evening, young lady. My name is Professor Whitefield. The 13. Burn in hell. Whitefield, now now, let's not get off to a bad start. Let us try again. My name is Professor Whitefield, and yours? 13. Fuck you. Whitefield, clicks tongue. Dear dear, they did tell me that you weren't very cooperative. It's a shame, but I suppose that I haven't brought you here to sip tea. I'm here to tell you that you're a very special young woman, and not in the way that every child is special. No, you can do things with your mind, can't you? Thirteen shakes head. My mind can do things with me. I can't control it. Keep me here any longer and my mind may just slip over your throat. Whitefield turns to observer. Shock her. Thirteen cries out in agony as electricity courses through her. Stop. Whitefield. My name is Professor Whitefield and you are? Thirteen. Elizabeth Keller. Whitefield. Smiles. Says perfect. Now I would love to stay and chat, but I'll allow you to get acquainted with your new quarters. Thirteen is locked in her cell. Thirteen, let me out. Struggles to keep her voice calm. Let me out. Let me go. Open the door. Open the door. Then it says, Day two, Whitefield. My hello child. Elizabeth, was it? Thirteen. Elizabeth, yes. Whitefield. So it was. Skims through papers. Were you by any chance related to Mrs. Annie Keller? 13. No. Whitefield. No relation. 13. None. Whitefield. Any notable relations? 13. No. Whitefield. None. 13. I already told you. No, you bastard. Whitefield. I advise you not to take that kind of tone with me. Thirteen is shocked again. Thirteen grimaces. Why are you keeping me here? Whitefield. I have my reasons. Children like you aren't easy to come by. Now, you've been known to cause thunderstorms upon getting angry, correct? Thirteen. Yes. Whitefield. And I've been told that you cannot control this. If you get angry, nothing can be done. Theoretically, of course, if kept in the right type of structure, it may be contained. But I digress. Anyway, tell me, Miss Keller, are you familiar with me? Do you know who I am? 13. Yes, you're the head of the local police. Whitefield. That's what the people have been told. No, you see, we aren't police. This town has no true police. No, the people who run this town and enforce the law work for me, but they're no police. We are the MEW Foundation. That stands for Mentally Engineered Weapon. Have you figured out what you're here for? 13. Why can't you just let me go? Am I going to die here? Whitefield. Relax. The 12 before you faded very well. I do not see why you should be any different. Everything after that was just all corrupted and... Uh, I think maybe they found out that it was leaked and tried to erase it or something. But how and why did it leak in the first place? I can't help but think that maybe it was 13 and some bizarre to attempt to expose the MEW Foundation. 
Anyway, I'm going to go now and uh, I'll keep you guys posted until the next update. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Hey guys, so uh, there hadn't been a sound from outside in more than a couple of hours when uh, I decided to go upstairs again. My power is still out and my phone's battery isn't getting any fuller, but I don't think I'll be in the basement much longer. I even considered letting the dogs outside, but I'm not rushing into anything. So I went upstairs and looked out the window and the girl that I had seen was crouched on my front steps wet from the dying rain and extremely thin from malnourishment. I still felt a shudder travel up my spine upon seeing her, but I felt that she had lost some of her ability to just fill me with fear. I mean, I now knew who she was, assuming that I could trust the transcript from the alert message. So, I knocked three times on my front door. Through the glass part of the door, I could see her stand up and turn around. She looked at me, silently pleading and I did what you guys have been warning me against doing this whole time. I let her in. She walked in without saying a word and just walked past me and looked around. I asked her if she was hungry and I noticed that my voice was dry from barely speaking for several days. She turned to me and nodded. Knowing full well that I didn't have much to spare, I opened a cabinet and took out a bag of marshmallows. She tore it open and began eating it faster than I could imagine. Funny, I don't even like marshmallows. That's why I never took them downstairs in the first place. I filled up a cup of water from the tap, uh, an ability that I had previously forgotten I possessed, and put it in front of her. She downed it in one gulp. Hey, uh, did you change my alert message? I asked. She nodded. Have you been hearing what I have on the radio? She nodded again. They aren't cops. I noticed that her voice was raspy. She probably rarely spoke. Yeah, I figured. Are you trying to run from them? Yes. Uh, okay, I said. Well, you can stay here for now. Do you have a house? I'm a dumbass, by the way. Uh, no. Family? She shook her head and I walked over to the door and closed it. Hey, uh, did you kill my neighbor? I asked. Yeah, but, uh, he tried to hurt me. I didn't want to. I told him to stop, but he, he had a shotgun. So you went to him for help? Okay, uh, how long have they been keeping you locked up for? She shrugged. Well, uh... It was 2014 when they got me. Four years. Shit. Okay, well, uh, I can help you. I don't know if these people work for the government or not, but if they don't, I can have them arrested and put away for good. If they are, well, I don't know then. Thank you. I'm just about out of food, though, I said. I'm going to go and get some from my neighbor. He won't need it anymore where he's gone, right? Okay. Just uh, help yourself to whatever, alright? I left my house despite every warning that I had been given and went across the street. I pushed open my neighbor's door and went inside and stepped over his body. His neck was turned at a, an awkward angle and a shotgun was lying next to him. I picked it up, cleared the chamber put the shells in my pocket and decided to keep it in case the M.E.W. Foundation came a knocking. I stuffed the big pouch on the front of my hoodie full of food and left, placing a, a washcloth over his eyes. At 13, sorry, uh, Liz, Betty, Beth, Lizzie, just Elizabeth, whatever, she was passed out on my couch. I put a blanket over her and put some of my old clothes next to her. Then, I locked the door and went back downstairs with my dogs. I turned on the radio and waited to get a signal from M.E.W. and it only took about five minutes. Kowalski? Yes, over. Hey, uh, this is McClellan. Uh, Sloan and I are headed to 3rd Street. We wanted to check the status on the radio disturbance examinations. Over. Well, uh, they were coming from, uh, I want to say, the house number 9? Over. Interesting. 
but we'll, we'll be sure to pay a visit. It looks like this may be finally over. Over? Uh, I don't know, man. What if 13's escape gave the others ideas? I mean, the entire town project may be compromised. Over? Eh, they know nothing about it. But those clones are idiots, Kowalski. Except 13. She's the exception, but that's probably because she's from a different person. At least from what I can gather. I never saw 14 or 26. Over. Uh, they're not idiots, McClellan. They're just uneducated, okay? Over. Yeah, you say that, but what about two? The strange things that went on, huh? That one, though, man, that was the dumbest of all. Over. Say what you want. I have my own opinion, and I happen to think the clones should be treated fairly. And two? That was unfortunate, to say the least. Over. I'll say. It didn't two, like, die? Just out of the blue, right? McClellan, what are you getting at? Nothing. Uh, over. Uh, hey, uh, what happened that day anyway? If I remember correctly, you got knocked out for a little while, yeah? Over. Well, uh, I, I was working with two and he came up behind me and hit me and then everything just went black. Over. Okay, Kowalski. Why are you here, man? You don't need this job. Over. I made a promise to Whitefield. I can't break it. Over. What kind of promise? If I remember correctly, you didn't want to be here at first. Over. Irrelevant, McClellan. Over and out. After that, the channel just went silent. I went back upstairs to find 13 awake. Hey, did you ever meet McClellan and Kowalski, Sloan, Jones, any of those guys? I asked. Yeah, all but Jones. Do you know why they hate Kowalski so much? I asked. Well, because of the two experiment, she said. Did he mess it up? I asked. She furrowed her brow. Well, no, she said. Well, they think so, but I know what really happened because I stole the master file. Do the other people on the radio know about it? I asked. Just Kowalski, because in a way, he, he's just like me. How so? Well, um, take a look at the file. Uh, it has the names of all the people used for the cloning process. She took a black binder out of her t-shirt and handed it to me. Here. I opened it up, and on the front page, there were four columns. In the first column was 001 to 006. The second, 007 to 012. The third, 013. She was the only one not adapted from another person. And the fourth, 014 to 026. At the top of every column was a name. Michael Kowalski, Sean, and then something ineligible. On the third column, Elizabeth Keller. And under that was the number one, Henry, withheld out of respect. This is the boy who drowned and was declared dead later on. Kowalski was the person used to make 001 to 006, Elizabeth said. Was? Well, during the two experiment, he was attacked from behind. The two killed him and assumed his job, his life, everything. He said the dead one was him, too, and not the original. I said so, but nobody believes me, and I didn't care anyway. Why would I? Kowalski's almost as dangerous as me, but I think he's like-minded. Are you okay? I gulped. Ah, uh, my name is Sean. As of now, we're waiting on edge for McClellan and Sloan to arrive, me holding a shotgun in hand and Elizabeth holding her powers in her mind. Until next time, I guess, uh, assume that we're still alive. So, upon further studying this book, guys, uh, I found that it names everyone in this town as pending cloning subjects. Apparently, in this town, they must take samples of your blood at birth or something. We're all ready to be cloned, but uh, only a few already have. Hey guys, uh, so, she knows it, and I know it too. 
this is just not going to work forever. The people at MEW will never stop looking for her until she's found. Sure, I could take care of McClellan, Sloan, Jones, Kawaski if necessary, but I'm certain that they have more manpower and who knows, that the other experiments might not be as kind as Liz. We just gave the radio a try and there was nothing much really, but we now have a time frame for the arrival of the officers. Kawaski, Sloan here, over. Sloan, uh, hey, have you and McClellan left for the city yet? Over. Yeah, uh, we'll be there in about uh, two hours, I'd say. Over. Uh, I just left as well. Uh, I'll be there in one and a half hours. Over. Well, tell us where you have and have not searched when we get there, okay? We need to shut this down today. Over. And Jones? Has he left? Over. Uh, not yet. Uh, he uh, probably won't be there for another three or so. Anyway, uh, take care. Over and out. The dogs are safely locked away in my basement for now, but I'm trying to convince my brother to take them to his house until things just blow over. I've told him about Liz being a normal person, and he didn't believe me at first, but I think he's coming around. Right now, she's wearing a grey hoodie of mine over jeans, a dark red converse, and a white marble t-shirt with a black venom insignia. I don't think they'll be able to identify her without giving her a second glance. A lot of you guys have been asking about the gun I found across the street. Uh, I did a little research and uh, the closest lookalike I found on Google Images was a Remington 870. I checked around my neighbor's house for more shells like some of you suggested, but I found about four more, I think, plus two more full power banks. I didn't do a very thorough check, though, because we're on a bit of a deadline right now. But, okay, uh, my brother just got back to me. He's going to take the dogs. He's still confused, but he'll totally back me up if I need him to, an officer's friendly smile and joyful show up. I'm not worried about running out of shells. If need be, Liz can probably make their heads explode or something anyway, but I'd rather she didn't have to because that would be difficult to explain to the authorities. I'm not too worried about running out of shells because if need be, well, Liz can probably make their heads explode or something. But I'd rather she didn't have to because, well, that would be difficult to explain to the authorities. Especially when the authorities know about 13 and are the ones that I'm getting ready to fight. I really can't see more than one update after this. I mean, I think by the end of today that it's going to be all over. I hope Liz makes it out okay, but it'll be a hell of a lot of work to keep them from her. If she's to be free, either everyone in MEW must die or she'll have to go on the run for real. In Mexico maybe, or Canada or something. Canada's closer, so that I guess before Mexico. Although, maybe if Whitefield dies, the others will leave her alone. I don't know. It's been about 45 minutes since we listened to the radio, and uh, Kowalski should be here in about 45 more. But Liz had a bright idea too. Uh, what if we left a note for him? So, we found some sidewalk chalk in the basement, and we took it out to the street and wrote two in large letters. But when the others show up... Either we can wash it off with a hose or with some rain, courtesy of Liz. But I think it's a good idea. I mean, what if Kowalski wants to fight just a little as we do? Okay, so uh, 15 more minutes have passed and I'm actually getting really anxious now. I think we should do one more sweep for supplies or something. Yeah, I think I'm going to quickly do that. So... We went back across the street and picked up a machete and a small revolver. I put the revolver in my pocket for now. I might need to give it to Liz even though I doubt she'll need it and I put the machete on my back. I don't know why all the other neighbors are being quiet. Should I give them a warning? I asked Liz if she killed them too but she said no. My brother showed up for the dogs and this was the gist of the conversation. Holy fuck, Sean. What? I asked him. You aren't enlisting in the military, you know. You don't need a fucking arsenal. You want one? I asked. Fuck no. I'm serious, I said. You might need it. But these people, they're going to check all the houses on the block probably. I'm good, man, he said, turning to Liz. So, you're the one who kept walking around outside? Uh, yeah. 
Liz replied. What's going on, man? He asked me. Are we involved in a, some messed up government experiment or some shit? Well, uh, frankly, yes, I told him. Hey, you got my, our back, right? Of course, he said. But I better not go to jail for this, buddy. Jim, just calm your ass, I said, motioning for him to calm down. Just take the dogs to your place, okay? Maybe come back here and just be ready for a fight, all right? Okay, he said, calming down slightly. All right, well, hurry up, I said, and he ran into the basement to get the dogs. A few minutes later, he was pulling out of the driveway. Your brother seems nice, Liz said. Eh, he's an ass, but you'll get used to it. Fifteen minutes before go, and he comes back. I handed him the machete when he refused the revolver, and I offered the revolver to Liz, but she said that she wouldn't need it. I agreed with her. I have my kitchen knife, too, in my other pocket, and we all had one of those, actually. Also, I forgot to mention that the revolver had a full cylinder. Okay, five minutes to go and Kawasuke should be passing by. I'm really nervous now, but I should be okay, I think. I don't think he'll be a problem, right? Alright, Kawasuke showed up and I'm looking through the window at him. He's looking at the chalk message and he looks like he's getting worried or nervous or confused or whatever. Oh shit, he just saw me. Okay, I'm back and I went outside with the shotgun in my hand and he took several steps back, his hands up. I questioned him a little and he admitted to killing the real Kowalski. Then Liz came out and we checked him and I took a handgun off of him. I'll try to find out what kind it was and I took him into the basement to tie him up. He's currently sitting across from us, bound and gagged and my brother pale as a sheet. We just kidnapped a guy for fuck's sake, he muttered. Well, we're probably about to kill a few more, I said. So buckle up. I noticed the insignia on his rappel, M.E.W., written in white against the dark grey fabric of his shirt. I decided to go wait behind my dead neighbor's house for McClellan and Sloan. Liz and my brother, Jim, I don't know if I said his name yet or not, but waited at the house. Okay, they're here now. They just got out of the car, but there's four of them. McClellan is a guy of average height and brown hair, moderately built, and Sloane is a slightly short woman with black hair and a ponytail. The other two are both tall and average build, one with blonde hair and one with black, both male. But one of the big guys just came my way. Sloane and McClellan are walking into my house's general area, and the other big guy is walking down the street away from me. I'm going to put my phone down for now, okay? Holy shit, guys. I just shot the guy. He came around and saw me, and before he could take out his gun, I shot him with the shotgun. McClellan and the other big guy were both in houses, but Sloan was outside, so she saw him fall down. Although, they probably all heard the shotgun. My ears are ringing, and I stood up and got ready to run, shaky from the fact that I now had this man's blood metaphorically on my hands. I shot at Sloane but missed and she caught up with me as I was running and I shot her in the thigh and she fell over but sat up and started shooting at me. McClellan must have decided to stay put and the big guy was nowhere to be seen so I crouched down behind the nearest house, Sloane crying out in pain. Why? She asked me. She was looking at me angrily and said you asshole too. I said to her that you can't have 13 and I know what you're doing in this place. She said that she was a police officer but... I said then, why does your shirt say M.E.W. and why do you keep saying over on the radio? She said that all cops say over and I used to think so too, I said to her. and She said, I don't care if 13 gets captured but I need to do my job. I said to them that I'm giving you an out, stay quiet, lay low and let me take care of it. She was looking behind me and... I turned around as a big guy came down around the corner with the house with his gun held out. I took out my knife and stuck it in his shoulder and he fell over and I got him, sticking it between his ribs. 
I said to him that I don't want to do this and he fell limp and I looked at Sloane. I said that if you can't call them off then nothing can be done and if it's something that can be stopped then stop it. Through her radio I heard a voice. This is Professor Whitefield to Officer Sloane. I'll be there shortly with Jones. In due time. Over. I took the shotgun and hit her with the barrel and I knocked her unconscious. My head is swimming guys. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So guys, uh, this is the last one for sure. For some of you, this is good news, but for me, uh, it might be too. A lot has happened since I last updated you guys. Uh, to make things easier, I'll try and pick up from where I left off. So... Sloane's walkie-talkie continued to crackle after she slumped over on the ground, but no more words came through. I took out my phone and called Jim, and this is what was said. Sean? Hey, uh, what happened? I just killed two of them, man, and one of them is out cold, I said, shakily. Fuck. What did you do that for, man? I didn't have a choice, I said. They jumped me, man. But that's not what I called for. Uh, tell Liz that Whitefield's on the way. What the fuck? Just tell her, okay? And it, how's Kowalski doing? All right, I suppose. Uh, considering that he's tied up. Uh, okay, uh, j just stay put, okay? I'm going to see if I can find McClellan. I hung up the phone and put it in my pocket, strafing around the house, my eyes scanning for any sign of McClellan. Sloan? Someone called from somewhere to my left. It must have been McClellan. I remained silent and looked around for the source of his voice. Hey, I estimate that we'll be there within about uh, 15 minutes? Whitefield said curtly through Sloane's radio. Over. Oh, fuck. I muttered. Sloane? McClellan repeated. You alright? I sprinted across the backyard and crouched behind a bird fountain. Sloane, hello? I could hear his voice getting closer, and finally, I could see him nervously inching closer to me. I stood up to move, and his eyes locked onto mine. He drew his pistol and fired. The bullet whirred by my shoulder and I ran, cocking the shotgun and firing it in McClellan's direction. I missed, and he came running at me. I cocked the gun again and fired, but only a few balls of bird shit landed on his left arm. Fuck! He cried, clutching his arm. Stop running, you fucker! Get out of here, I said. I know what you're trying to do here. Oh yeah? And what will you do about it? Kill me? Kill fucking Whitefield? Good luck with that one, pal. What did you do to Sloane? She's unconscious, I said. But alive. At least until you put down the fucking gun. You're one to talk, he said. Drop it. I lower my gun and he lowered his. You're treading on thin ice, prick, he said. If you don't stop, you're going to have to face Whitefield in the flesh, and you'll find that he isn't as understanding as me. Now where are Maloney and Schmidt and Kowalski? The big guys? I asked. Dead. Kowalski too. I'm sorry, they drew on me. Oh, you fucker, McClellan said, raising his gun again. How do I know you're telling the truth? I know where 13 is, but I won't tell you because I know what's going on in that place. I read the transcript of the first couple of days that 13 was in there. The fuck did you get that? He asked. It got put on some bullshit emergency alert message. If I had to guess, she put it there to discredit you guys. Listen, man, whatever you read, you have to believe me. 13 is dangerous, okay? Well, it's not like you aren't. Look, kid... Put your gun down. I won't hurt you. But you need to let me know where 13 is, okay? I am not dropping my gun, I said. But she's in there. I pointed to my dead neighbor's house. For real? He asked. You're not playing with me? No, I said. I'm being honest, okay? All right, he said. He turned around to enter the house. Okay, I'm trusting you here. I nodded. Be careful, man. I know what I'm doing, okay? 
While his back was turned, I quietly started backing away. You know what? McClellan asked. I'm not going to turn my back on a guy with a gun in his hands, okay? So, why don't you put that shit down, huh? Okay, okay, I said, dropping the shotgun. Thank you, McClellan said in exasperation, turning around again as I continued to back up. Now you stay put so I don't have to do something rash, alright? Yeah, okay, I said, continuing to back up. You hear that? He asked, turning around. Huh? I asked. I listened for the noise in question and I found it. Tires on gravel. I turned around and I saw a car pulling into a driveway three houses down from my house. That's probably Whitefield, McClellan said. I advise you to act on your best behavior, kid, else you're going to have a bad time, all right? McClellan? Said a man in the passenger seat of the car as he opened his door. Who's the kid? Civilian, McClellan said. Killed the others, uh, except Sloan. Ah, oh, fuck. McClellan, you're not cuffing him? What's going on here? Whitefield asked, exiting the vehicle. I studied Jones and Whitefield. Whitefield was tall with long grey hair and a slightly wrinkled face. Jones was tall as well, but with short cropped hair and a strong jaw. He's saying his kid killed the others, boss. Listen, McClellan said. He says 13's hiding over there. He pointed to the house that I had tipped him off on. Whitefield closed his eyes, focusing, and it seemed on something. And then he said no. What? Jones asked. You lying? McClellan asked me. No, I said. I swear. Yes, you are, Whitefield said, opening his eyes and pointing to my house. I can sense her from this distance, and she's in there. Well, I said. I thought that she was in the other one. McClellan, came a voice from in the distance. Jones, Whitefield... Sloan, I thought. Fuck. Jones ran off towards Sloan's cries, and Whitefield and McClellan, they turned to face me. So, McClellan said, this kid said that he knows about M.E.W. Does he? Whitefield asked. Well, something will have to be done, won't it? Give me his gun. Uh, sir, are you certain? McClellan asked. Yes, McClellan. Now give me his gun. We don't have all day. The sweepers will be here soon to wipe out the town and the copies will be placed shortly thereafter. Now give me that gun. But sir, uh, he, he may be of some assistance. You know, with the cloning and all? He knows too much to live, Whitefield said as my heart pounded in my chest. Pick it up and give it to me. McClellan swallowed hard and bent over to pick up the gun. He grasped it in his hands and stood straight up again. Fine then. With a crash, my living room window exploded across the street, bursting into a million tiny fragments and sending long jagged blades of glass just soaring through the air. One slashed through McClellan's neck, bringing him to his knees and then to his stomach as blood spurted from the cut. Another lodged itself firmly into Whitefield's back. Well, Whitefield said as McClellan writhed on the ground. That's unfortunate. I bent down and pried my gun from McClellan's hands, trying to ignore his gurgling and I aimed it at Whitefield. I pulled the trigger and the birdshot erupted into his body. <sighs> you insufferable child! He cried, turning to face my house as he pulled the glass out of his back. Escaping the lab will be the last thing you ever did, and you? He turned to me. Why don't you give me that gun? The bullet holes in his body were beginning to cover themselves. I fired again and this time face met lead. The skin gone, giving away to bone and muscles. He said, give me that gun you fuck. But with a flick of the wrist, he beckoned the gun towards him and it left my hands for his. Now boy, you will meet your literal maker. He cocked the gun and prepared to fire. Thirteen ran out of my open doorway before the door hit the wall and reached out for the telephone pole. It uprooted itself and went flying at Whitefield. It cracked over his head and fell onto the ground in two pieces. He moved the barrel of the gun away from me and fired at Thirteen. Liz fell to the pavement in tatters. 
You fucking asshole! I shouted. What? He asked. Did you really think that you were going to win? You along with, let me guess, your brother and a runaway freak? Please. We have more power than you could ever dream of. And you owe everything that you have, ironically, to us anyway. We are responsible for your creation. Every single one of you. All using the same original entity as a base. Even I owe everything to the immeasurable Zero. I reached for my kitchen knife and found it in my pocket. I took hold of it in a reverse grip and ran blindly forward. Don't you understand? He asked, pushing me onto the ground with his mind. This story has no happy ending. He took my knife and threw it over his shoulder, blood still pouring from the holes in his head. I could kill you, you know, but I want you to see what I mean. You'll see the sweepers come through. You'll see how they erase this town completely. It'll be as though it never existed. And then a week or so later, the clones will take over, and nobody will know the difference. I tried to sit up, but he kicked me in the chest and sent me onto my back. Goodbye, Sean. You will not be missed. Jones, get Sloan. Let's get out of here. The deed is done. I stood only when their car was leaving the block, and I limped towards my house, stepping over Liz's lifeless body and knocking on the basement door. Jim... Get the dogs. We need to leave now. People were starting to leave their homes when we left, and I advised them to evacuate. Many of them did, and the others, as of me writing this, are probably mostly dead or imprisoned. We've been on the road since we left, and we managed to get into the next state, so far. We took the dogs and unnecessary items, as well as a few small luxuries and stuff. We're both totally messed up from what happened, and we haven't mentioned Liz once since leaving. There won't be any more updates after this, because this is definitely going to be the last one. Thank you all for listening to this. Uh, I know it fell apart towards the end, but it is what it is. I don't know what comes next, but I know that it won't be easy. The alert was also finally taken off of my phone, for a while that is. While sitting in a Wendy's parking lot though and waiting for Jim to get back, I received another alert. And this one was different to say the least. Emergency alert. I am informally issuing an emergency alert for the following counties. Citizens should be wary of all government officials. The town will be swept for survivors with clear memories of recent events. Nobody is safe here. I advise you all leave as soon as you can. Do not talk to any police officers if their uniforms are marked M-E-W. They are not police officers. Effective indefinitely. Do not go to these counties. It is not safe there. I wish you all good lives and bid you adieu. For as long as you remember this, assume that I'm alive. Guys, I just got out to use the bathroom and when I got back, there was a full box of thin mints in the back seat.